I need you to understand this. This is one of the darkest chapters in American history. So I'm excited, but also, you know, kind of like you said, anxious too. We're about to see the full extent of everything that we've just heard a bit of. Where are we? We're in McAllen, Texas after uh, like a, a million hour drive. We made it. Um, we have no idea what we're going to be doing, but we are going to be helpful. These are those dangerous people we're getting from across the street. Various buses arrive and children, kids, teens, you know, exit from those that transportation and into a world that we shared together. And each one of us had different experiences at that point. Uh, after about five minutes, I actually start making small talk with these boys. One really stands out, um, Christopher. A uh, 13 year old boy from Honduras. When I asked him where he was headed, he opened up into a huge smile to tell me he was going to Louisiana, a place he didn't even know one thing about. Uh, you could feel the spirit from across the room. Uh, I'll never forget the boys that everyone fears, the boys that are misunderstood, the boys who had dreams of being football and basketball players. I feel like everyone should know the true story, not just the things that they see on the news. And I feel these past few days have been leading up to this one interaction. As I was talking and playing with these guys, from the corner of my eye, I see a familiar face. And that stuck with me for a while till towards the end of, of, of it. He greeted me and introduced himself. And as soon as he introduced himself, as soon as I remembered who he was, he was a long time friend from a guarderia where I used to um, study up until uh, first grade. It was named La Casita Feliz. And the fact that I was hesitant to go talk to him and try and catch up because I, w I was confused and angry. Uh, I don't know, it kind of messed me up. Um, I'm, I was mostly angry because I felt like I couldn't do anything and he was there, but I couldn't help him, much less talk to him because of how all the emotions I was going through and I just guess I didn't know what to do. And it's something that I won't forget, that I will just always have in the back of my head. Where are we going? We're going to the um, International Bridge. And then we're gonna go uh, deliver some food and interview some people while we're there. Do you hear about the family separation and it's like hard to hear, but it's something you kind of just push off and like it wasn't until today, like looking at their faces and just seeing how much love that they had for each other is just so beautiful. It's a really sad, cruel thing to take them away from each other. They're each other's whole world. I looked into each one of their eyes and I just saw something so different that I never see here. And I just, I don't know, it just gave me like such a sense of like family and, and friendship. She originally just came with her and her daughter and they came on a bus. Mm -hmm. That's how they got over here. But the whole reason she had to come is because her son was, uh, kidnapped and then killed and the way she found out about it was through the news because yeah that they had put gasoline on him and like burned him. I need you to understand that the government of the United States of America did these to these families. They tortured them. It is cruel and unusual punishment. They used the excuse of prosecuting them for crimes of coming in through the river to take their children. So the border is 
border is hot. The border is insane. The border is hot. The border is insane. The border is tall. The border is hot. The border is insane. The border is tall. The border is unfair. Is unfair. The tremendous power of eight teenagers. Mm -hmm.